During this presentation, we will demonstrate proper cockpit procedures to include interior check, before starting, engine start and run up, before takeoff, and engine shutdown. Following these procedures step by step will assure you a safe flight. Let's assume all exterior checks have been made. As we continue with the interior checks, take a good look around the cockpit to ensure all loose equipment is secured. Ensure that the pilot door is secure. Check to ensure that the emergency release handles are secure. Adjust pedals for personal comfort. Securely fasten seat belt and shoulder harness. Check shoulder harness lock for proper operation and leave unlocked. Now check freedom of movement of flight controls by pushing the tail rotor pedals back and forth, checking for any binding in pedal movement. Release both cyclic and collective friction. Move cyclic stick in a circular motion, checking for any binding of cyclic controls. Note, if co-pilot cyclic stick is in stowed position, a sure electrical plug is connected. Move collective up and down, checking for freedom of movement. Leave collective in down position and set friction as desired. Caution, if battery and fuel boost pump switches are on and throttle is open before motoring engine, Fuel will flow into the combustion chamber and can contribute to a turbine outlet over temperature start. Check the throttle for proper operation by rotating the throttle to the full increase position, then roll back to idle stop. Press idle release button and roll throttle to the full off position. Make sure the landing light switch is in the off position. Check all radios off and set to the desired frequency. Check engine instruments for static indications and operating range limit markings. Radio bearing heading indicator must be checked for security and current calibration card. Check turn and slip indicator for security, ball in race, and race full of fluid. Now place the directional gyro magnetic switch to the magnetic position. Ensure that the IFF code switch is in the off position. Place force trim switch to the on position. Hydraulic boost switch to the on position. Check vertical speed indicator for security and note static indication. Set altimeter for proper field elevation. Next, Cage the attitude indicator 
and lock it if lock is installed by rotating the knob clockwise. Check the airspeed indicator for static indication, slippage mark, and operating range limit markings. Check the clock for proper setting and ensure it is running. Check magnetic compass for flood level, heading, and current deviation card. Check the free air temperature gauge for security and note reading. Above your head and on the right of the overhead console is the fuel valve handle. Check security and condition of the mounting bracket. Check for proper operation by placing the handle to the off position, aft, then back to the on position, forward, and leave in the on position. On the overhead console, place the following switches in the prescribed position. Inverter switch off. Non-essential bus switch normal. Manual for night. Generator switch off. Battery switch off. Auxiliary receptacle switch off. Engine DI switch off. Pitot heater switch off. Defog and vent switch off. Heater switch off. Engine oil bypass switch off. Note, in a combat situation with the possibility of oil cooler failure, oil cooler bypass switch should be in the auto position. Place position light switch to the off position and the anti-collision light switch off. Rotate console and instrument lights rheostats counterclockwise to the off position. Check all circuit breakers in. Now, make sure the map light is off. Put your helmet and gloves on. Now turn the battery switch on. If this were a night flight, Position lights would now be turned on. Check illumination of the warning panel by pushing the press to test button. Note, if the engine out warning light is not illuminated, check circuit breaker in. Do not fly the aircraft until the malfunction is corrected. On the lower console, test the caution lights to ensure they are operative, to include the master caution. Reset master caution switch. The caution lights will go steady bright and the master caution light will be extinguished. Place engine relight switch in the off reset position, down. Then place to the relight position, up. Note, two types of switches may be used. One is spring loaded to the relight position. The other does not utilize the spring loaded position and must be manually pressed to the relight position. Raise the collective and listen for the engine out audio in your headset. Decrease the governor RPM switch for seven seconds. Recheck the throttle in the full closed position.
Now we are ready for engine start and run up. Let us review some precautionary measures, limitations, and procedures prior to starting. Also keep in mind the maximum wind limitations for starting and stopping the OH-58A Kiowa is 45 knots. Caution. In case of false start, or a start not completed in a total time of 45 seconds, close throttle and motor engine with throttle closed for at least 10 seconds and until residual TOT indication reads less than 200 degrees centigrade. At outside air temperature of 10 degrees centigrade or below, allowable total starting time is increased to 60 seconds. If starter relay chatters during start cycle, it is an indication of low battery power. Abort start and use APU or recharge battery. During the start cycle, the engine relight bulb may illuminate. When APU is used, the bulb may illuminate immediately after the starter switch is depressed. When battery or low output APU is used, the bulb may not illuminate until actual engine light off. The throttle will be open to idle at peak of N1 RPM provided the TOT is not above 200 degrees centigrade and the following N1 RPM limits are maintained. 15% and above at 7 degrees centigrade through 54 degrees centigrade 13% and above at minus 18 degrees centigrade through 7 degrees centigrade. 12% and above at minus 54 degrees centigrade through minus 18 degrees centigrade. If the main rotor is not moving by 30% gas producer speed in one abort start and investigate for possible mechanical failure or drive system malfunction. The TOT indicator should be monitored for any over temperature indication. During the start period, any time 749 degrees centigrade is exceeded for more than 10 seconds, perform engine shutdown and record peak temperature and duration. Maintenance action is required before next flight. Any time 927 degrees centigrade is exceeded, perform engine shutdown and record peak temperature and duration. Maintenance action is required before next flight. The starter button should be released any time between 58 and 62 percent in one. We have reviewed some precautionary measures, limitations, and procedures. Now we will begin engine start and run up. Check rotor blades clear and untied and fire guard posted. Depress and hold starter button. Monitor the N1 gas producer gauge. When N1 reaches correct percent, roll throttle to the left until idle stop button pops up. Monitor N1 and TOT gauges. Ensure rotor blades are turning by 30% N1. Monitor the TOT and engine oil pressure. When N1 reaches 58 to 62 percent, release the starter button. Check engine oil pressure for normal indication. Transmission oil pressure warning lights should not be illuminated. Check engine idle between 62 and 63 percent N1. Place engine relight switch to the off reset position, down, then to relight position, up. Engine relight bulb should not illuminate. Place generator switch to the generator position. Check DC amp meter for normal indication. Caution, do not turn on radios or inverter until generator output decreases to 50 to 60 amps. Place inverter switch to the inverter position. Turn all radios on.
We must now check force trim for proper response. Switch off the force trim and check the tip path plane. Caution. Limit cyclic movement to two inch maximum displacement. The rotor is responding properly. Check flight controls for freedom of movement. Now for the hydraulics off check. Warning. Before any movement of controls with the hydraulic system off, both hands must be on the controls. Place hydraulic boost switch in the off position. This will cause the master caution light and the hydraulic pressure caution light to illuminate. Reset the master caution light and continue the hydraulics off check. Check freedom of cyclic control movement by moving cyclic 45 degrees left forward, back to neutral, then 45 degrees right forward, then back to neutral. Now check freedom of collective control movement by increasing and decreasing collective pitch. Place the hydraulic boost switch back to the on position. Note. Feedback forces will be encountered when moving the cyclic stick. If hydraulic servos are functioning properly, negligible force will be required to maintain a given stick position once stick is stopped by the pilot. Turn the force trim switch on. Slowly increase the throttle to full increase. This will give you 97% in two. Increase the into governor switch on your collective control head through full range. This brings the into up to 104%. Now decrease the governor to bring the into down to 103%. This is your normal operating RPM. Now place engine DI switch to the on position. Check for rise in TOT. Place engine DI switch to the on or off position as required. Note, when anti-ice is on, TOT will be higher for the same power setting as with anti-ice off. Place pitot heater switch on. Check for indication on the DC amp meter. Place pitot heater switch to the on or off position as required. Place the defog and vent switch to the on position. Check for indication on the DC amp meter. Then turn the defog and vent switch off. Turn the heater switch on and rotate heater rheostat. Check for rise in TOT. Turn the heater switch off. Turn the interior lights on or off as required. Unlock the attitude indicator if lock is installed. Now check your flight instruments. Turn on the anti-collision light switch. Collective friction and force trim as desired. This concludes the interior check before starting, engine start, and run-up procedures. We are ready for a before takeoff check. The before takeoff check includes no warning lights, 
Engine instruments in normal operating range. Fuel quantity checked. Engine RPM 103% N2. Engine relight switch to engine relight position if installed. Caution lights off. And fuel boost pump switch off for takeoff below 10,000 feet MSL. The final check to be performed is the engine shutdown procedures. Roll throttle to idle stop and allow to idle for two minutes. Turn the force trim on. Now center the cyclic, push collective full down, and set friction on the cyclic and collective. Place the anti-collision light switch off. Turn all radios off. Then turn all electrical switches off except generator and battery. Note, if the amp meter indicates a charging rate greater than 10 amperes at idle with all electrical load off, continue operating the engine until the amp meter decreases to the range of 5 to 10 amperes, thus indicating that the battery is approaching a fully charged state. Fully close the throttle and monitor the TOT. Note, with engine relight switch in the relight position, the bulb will illuminate when the throttle is closed. This indicates the auto relight system is operable. Position lights as required. Now turn the generator switch off. Caution, before turning battery switch off, Ensure TOT is stabilized below 400 degrees centigrade. If TOT rises above 400 degrees centigrade, this indicates a residual fire in the engine. Motor engine with throttle closed for at least 10 seconds and TOT indication reads less than 200 degrees centigrade. Now turn the battery switch off and if aircraft is armed, pull armament circuit breakers. Tie down the main rotor blades.
Following a post-flight inspection, complete DA forms 2408-12 and-13. This completes the demonstration of the cockpit procedures on the OH-58A Kiowa. Following your checklist step-by-step step, will ensure aircraft dependability and your safety during the flight. <laughs>